for the United States and which is a Welcome, everybody, in person and online. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to call mutual consent for items. 1.03, the approval of the regular meeting agenda. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. I'd like to ask for a motion of consent for item 1.04, approve the regular board meeting minutes. Um, yeah, I'll turn it back to the Senate meeting. Second. Any questions on the minutes? Any changes or updates? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. <laughs> Elementary school update. We're, we're ready, Mrs. Uh, May. Uh, wow. Yes. So we thought we would offer an opportunity for you to hear from the voice of our leadership team um, in the elementary. We have always um, had a student council opportunity led by Mrs. Becky Kay, um, but she passed the reins on to uh, Mrs. Savino and Mrs. Ross this year. And we are excited to share. Well, I'm not excited to share because I'm excited for you to share. <laughs> <laughs> you get to take all the leadership opportunities to be able to share all of the amazing things that are taking place with our student council leadership group, which includes kids from kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade. So we're very excited about this. So. I'll turn it over to Mrs. Savino to share first. Do you guys want to slide? We might want to be able. Does this one have ours on it too? Okay. Do you guys want to slide over here in case you want to look at the slides? If you want me to step back. Yeah, I'll do this right now. Um, yeah, you can move on to this one. All right. So the first thing I wanted to share again, I'm Mrs. Savino. I teach third grade with the other advisor, Mrs. Ross. The kids like to call us besties. Um, <laughs> we are. And um, I think we're going to make a great team this year. Um, just a little side note, Mrs. Ross and I both were student council advisors in our previous district, so we felt very strongly about taking over this position. Um, so I'm very glad. Uh, it's something I really missed from my old district that I was, I knew that at some point Becky would be handing it off. So I was super excited for the opportunity because this year um, we did an application. So the kids that are in elementary student council this year truly want to be there they are the leaders of the building. Um, we had application questions featured here, like what is your best Go Blue trait and why? What is a Go Blue trait that you need to improve on? So they really needed to be honest and understand our Go Blue traits. We even made them get a GES reference that had to sign um, somebody that could vouch for them and say, you know, they're great in the classroom, they have great leadership skills, they'd be a good addition to the team. So this, like, one of those is actually a second graders, believe it or not. Um, so it kind of was in the past, it could get to be a little bit of a popularity contest. So this year, the kids really took pride in filling out these applications and knowing that they were blind voted in. We didn't even let the teachers tell the names of the applications. They just read from the application. So it was a true um, application process that I think Right off the bat, these guys felt really good about being part of student council. We celebrated at the Go Blue Assembly in September by announcing all the names. Teachers were trying to be like, who's my kid? Who's my kid? And I'm like, nope, we're making it a big deal. So that was really exciting. Um, so yeah, it's great. We have a wonderful group of kids and three amazing kiddos here to share more tonight. Hi, my name is Cora. Unfortunately, Willow couldn't be here, so I'm going to do her slide and my slide. So one thing, these are our goals so for every year. So the first goal we have is to increase school spirit by matching our spirit um our spirit week and day to the middle school high school building. And then secondly we're gonna try to create a welcoming and an encouraging environment for new students. Like I'm a new student. So um one thing that um we were like thinking was 
good goal was we have a lot of Spanish fluently speaking students at the school. So one idea that we had was to have like for English speaking students, we would have members of student council, but for Spanish speaking students or families in general, a person who speaks Spanish, they can be not on student council or in student council and then they can give a tour to someone who speaks Spanish or their family speaks Spanish. Then lastly, our, our third goal is to is to try and in, trying to increase impact with the community. So we're gonna like be working with several organizations this year. Oh awesome. Nice job. Hi, my name is Ethan and we are going to be doing a red ribbon week next week, which we will um which is where you are kind of like we do activities to um live a drug free life. Some activities are dress up days from Monday, October 28th to Friday, November 1st, and a coloring contest to win like a family movie night prize bucket. And this is gonna be like a pledge wall, you can like sign a paper and then put it like up and then you can do like a huge wall of pledges to live a drug free life. Very good. It's me again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we are starting a brand new elementary school post office this year. So one thing that this will do, it will, it will encourage students to socialize with peers and staff members across the elementary school. <clears throat> and it provides real world experience because when you're older, or now we'll just have to mail a bunch of packages and a few letters. And then it also supports school-wide writing goals because we're supposed like we should be writing a lot. It's a good life school. And then before I finish, let's give a hand to Mrs. Ross for doing the address book that took her hours. <laughs> We're trying to get one of these blue mailboxes to the school, probably like a few. And then we're all, we also will be getting little news bags. Because like if anyone has ever seen the show Newsies, like they wear news bags. So we're going to look like little news boys and girls. <laughs> and student council will sort every single letter to make sure that it has no bad words, nothing unkind or rude. We have actually communicated with the local Geneseo post office. So in sitting currently in our mudroom at home, my mudroom is they actually did donate an actual um, mail bag. They donated some old shirts that Mrs. Spino still needs to wash. And um, I just missed it. They paved the new thing out there and got rid of their old big blue mailbox. But the um, postmaster was really kind enough. He actually called to have them bring one back for us. So we're just waiting on that, but we will actually have a, a U.S. Great. postal box. Yeah. Right. Right. Blue double blue. Great. My name is Miles Rhyming. I'm a fifth grade student at this school. And so this is the kid to kid closet. It is a closet uh, at the back of the door in the third grade hallway that allows students without jackets or coats or snow pants and more to or grabs some from the school that it provides. It allows students to enjoy outdoor activities such as recess, nature walks, field trips, or keep warm when they simply forget to keep their own coat or sim simply forget their own coat at home. Kid to kid closet is to give jackets, hats, snow pants, gloves, and more. If you borrow a coat, you must bring it back for other kids. If anyone wants to clean up the kid the kid closet at any time, they're more than welcome to. <laughs> this is only for recess, not to take home. And it will be located at the at the door in the second third grade hallway, second and third grade hallway. Um for recess. Fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> So the food drive, um, it is for families uh, who can't 
provide to celebrate with a nice meal together. And we are hoping to get food donations around the whole holiday time. Oh, so for December, um, Willow, who I wish could be here, she's like talking to somebody that's your own age as a teacher. It's very bizarre. I wish you could hear her speak, but hopefully at some point you will. But she has many great ideas. And one of her ideas was um, pen pals with Morgan Estates because she mentioned, I know that um, the elderly can get very lonely around the holiday time. And she just had this wonderful idea to connect um, uh, with the lovely people at Morgan Estates. So that was her idea that she wanted to share. Any questions? Oh, we were talking about goal setting possibly in January. Yeah. Any questions? Wow, fantastic. You guys are great speakers. Great Thanks for yeah. coming. Thank you very much. If you want to do the video now? Yep, Mr. Holt, to do the video now. <laughs>
Thank you. Get it, sir. All right. As they set up, this is a group of our uh, middle school. I don't know where to look here. Our middle school uh, clarinet players. We have Cooper Jolette. Kimmy Weingartner and Claire Staley. Uh, so we've been working on a trio, one of a book of trios that we have, and I'm very excited. You guys ready? Let's do this. and get them, but it's been a long day. So as they set up, this is a group of our middle school students as well, two flutes and an oboe, uh, Ellie Ward, Grayson Burns, and Marriott Amadi uh, on oboe. And here we go. Sorry, Mr. Holt. Back into your camera. Here we go. Very nice. Thank you. Very we much. have three high school string players coming up as well. <laughs> They're actually three seniors making their way. You probably know most of them. Uh, Gianna Cucciara, Anna Ferrero, and uh, our exchange student from Germany, Paula Schwork on cello. Right. Right. Oh. It's right the chair. Yeah. Really tough to play the cello standing up. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Just push it up. We get your really tough one. <laughs> Good. 
good. Okay, girls. I'll grab in the morning. It's all good. <laughs> Thanks. All right, again, thank you, everyone, uh, for this opportunity for, for the students to, to perform. We're always looking for things like this. Uh, the more our students can perform, the more comfortable they get with it. I was one of those nervous performers growing up. Uh, it was really, it was awful for me. And it took time to really develop that that comfort with this whole thing. You never really get totally comfortable with it. You just start to accept how it goes. Uh, but there is a little bit of exhilaration that kind of rush uh, when you finish that well-executed performance. So thank you for this opportunity. Happy board appreciation week, month. We'll give you the whole month. All right. Thank you. 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 Hunter, uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, so I'm. I have four four things. Uh, Mike and I are going to share with you this evening. We're going to talk a little bit about board recognition and follow up on some of the work with, of, of the students. Uh, we'll share with you um, a tax variance that uh, we would like the board to consider for our volunteer fire and ambulance groups. We're also going to do an update from the safety committee. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit about a grant situation, and Mr. Salatel is going to do an update regarding school and community activities. So we're going to start with some board recognition um, and board appreciation. So uh, if we can jump to the next slide, and Sherry, we're going to pass out some of the 
nice little gifts that are the follow on what Jen had to say. And are we going to take a little break after this and just whatever you want to do? So we can't have a celebration without sheet cake. I mean, come on, let's let's be real. So what we're going to do? Well, yep, we're going to follow on uh, John and, and and the student council presentation and the student presentation with a short break um, with some sheet cake. Um, so when you think about what this board does on their volunteer time, when you think about what this board does without any type of remuneration, it is time and a special type of time and commitment and passion. Um, it is the connection to the community that makes the school Geneseo school, not just any old school, trying to educate students, but that connection that our board members provide for us. Uh, it's a passion. Uh, and without that passion, how can you be the best? How can you desire to be the best? How can you have the energy to, the best, to be the best? And our board starts with providing all of us that passion so that we can reach that end of being the very best. You share with us your ideas. Uh, you speak openly. And honestly, in a public setting, which can be tough to do, with expertise and commitment to students. We appreciate greatly that at the heart of your work are the individuals that are delivering the education to our students, faculty, staff, and administration. And finally, we appreciate that there's this constant focus for all of us that comes from your lighthouse, from your beam, that we are working towards student success. So Board of Education Week, but Geneseo Central School District Board of Education, thank you for the work that you do for us. So let's take, take two, three minutes. We're gonna take a little bit of a respite. We'll see if people wanna grab a cookie or a piece of cake. Uh, if they do, that's right. gonna be great. And then we'll- Over to them. <laughs> uh, oh, and uh, you're, you're here, so you're giving your time, so you're all invited.
tethers in there. So a typical practice of boards of education, when they need to conduct a public hearing according to New York State regulation, is to take a, a moment within a regular meeting and adjourn to a community or public hearing. Specifically, what that means is that the initial presentation is not just to the Board of Education who has been briefed on this matter, but the presentation also is specifically for our members of the audience that are here and members of the audience that are watching, so that according to regulation, we're fulfilling our obligation to inform the community about a significant policy change or behavior. So at this point, we're moving to a public hearing. And in the public hearing phase, not only is the Board of Education invited to ask questions, but our community members that are sitting here are also invited to ask any questions regarding this presentation. So specifically, um, we are going to be addressing a request for a variance from our volunteer fire ambulance uh, departments uh, for the service that they render to our community. Um, the board needs to know and the community needs to know that potentially we're looking at 37 candidates who might be eligible to uh, uh, earn this type of tax variance. Variance is for a 10% reduction on, own, on your own property assessment. We asked the tax assessor to give us a sense of what this, the implications of this 10% variance might be. And over our four tax districts and the potential of the 37 candidates, we're looking at a tax impact of approximately $11,600. It's important to know that we're following in the same direction as our friends with the town and village governments that have already taken a similar action in order to uh, provide a variance in regard to their tax roles as well. For the members of the fire and ambulance department to become eligible for this variance, they need to be an active volunteer member with at least two years of experience and 125 hours of training. After 20 years of service, any member will receive the variance for life. Now, um, we have some board members that uh, have helped me put together of this information. So uh, at this point, if there's any other bits or pieces of information that the board would like to share in the hearing format uh, or have questions, I'm going to start with the board and then we're going to check in with the community. The only thing, thank you, Dr. Hunter. Yeah. The only thing I would add to that was, is the fire department and ambulance do get a $200 credit today and they would be able to choose one or the other. They can't take both, but they get one or the other. So tip, the the math that we've done, this, this particular one would be typically higher than the $200, given the, uh, the assessed values of kind of the average assessed value of a property. So that uh, that's one point I would, I would offer. I think just from my own personal perspective, I think this is a small price to pay for for the amount of time and effort that they put in, they meaning the fire and ambulance of their personal time protecting our community. They've done it for years without any any compensation on their part as well. So again, I uh, I personally support this. I think it's the right thing to do. And I think it's from that perspective worthy of consideration. Mm -hmm. Board members, any other thoughts or comments to add to? I would just like to thank all the community members who are uh, volunteers and uh, fire ambulance. Uh, mm -hmm. Just thank them for their service. Agreed. Are there any questions from individuals sitting in the in the audience uh, about this proposal? How long do you want to hold this open? We'll hold it open for the seven seconds of silence. <laughs> and after seven seconds of silence, that means we've got closure and recognition. And if we could have a motion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'd like to have a consent vote in regards to section uh, number 4.02. Volunteer firefighters and workers from real property taxation credit. 
um, do that. Um, at this point in time, though, I would like the record show that I have to recuse myself from the vote to be a member of the volunteer program. Second. All right. Thank you. Motion made and second. Any further comments from the public or from the board on this motion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? We have one recusal. Motion made. Thank you. Fire Department, Ambulance, thank you for your service. I know Ken's here representing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, well said, and thank you, board, for um, the recognition and the comments in the city. Um, so now we're going to be closing our public hearing section and we're returning to our normal board of education. So the rest of the business at work will be directed to the board. I'm sorry, can I, can I go back? I, sure. I, I, I forgot. No, no. I said I recognize Ken, but I have to turn to my left here. Um, uh, I ignored the fact that Kevin Niedemeyer is chief of the Groveland Fire Department and has I start my 40, I started my 49 years. 40, I was, I was going to give him 50, but 49 years of service. So between he and Ken, I think we got pretty close to a century here, right? But, uh, but I just didn't want to ignore this guy on my left. Thank you. Good hands. We've got good, we got good yeah. hands. And, and thank you. Thanks. Okay, now we are returning to uh, a Board of Education uh, meeting, which means that the business at hand will be the work of the Board of Education. Of course, there will be a public, public comment session, but that's part of our board agenda work. So uh, I'm gonna just quickly uh, do another school safety update uh, because I can't give enough credit to our school district safety team. Uh, they were the ones that helped us shape the plan for the October 11th workshop in which we revised our district safety uh, flip charts and safety plan, uh, safety procedures so that we can operate in a more smooth and procedurally sound manner. Uh, on October 11th, we reviewed those procedures and practiced some of our drills. We've already had a second meeting uh, and uh, that's uh, unusual for district safety teams. They generally meet three times a year. They, this team has already met two times a year and they've already started to identify the next phase of how we can plan and improve um, our safety work within the district. We also have a very small group of safety command and control. Um, and that's uh, our administrative team, uh, John Holt, inclusive of that group, and Joe Hopper, inclusive of that group, uh, and Kevin Niedermeyer, inclusive of that group, where we are already beginning to look at the district safety plan. And we're taking it apart piece by piece so that when we get to May, we have a totally reviewed and revised district safety plan that can be brought to the to the Board of Education for review, update, and input into the state education uh, safety um, uh, safety portal, so that we are meeting all of our not only meeting all of our requirements, but we're meeting our requirements in a very thorough way, and not waiting to the end, but digging in now on some of those tough questions. And issues. So district safety work, um, oftentimes you will hear, um, and I've been guilty of this myself, where you say safety is first in your school. And then you hardly do anything about it. Well, we've got a group right now who is saying, no, 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 uh, our district safety team is not going to let us just make this into verbiage. We're going to make it into real work that makes a difference for our students. And then finally, um, I want to address with the Board of Education uh, and, and maybe maybe some, some of those out in the community. Um, I've been, uh, it's been brought to my attention that, um, uh, that some of the information about a potential grant called the COPS grant, which is a safety grant and a facilities improvement grant uh, has been shared with the community. And I wanted to make sure that if it's if the issues are out in the community, that we're dealing with facts rather than just maybe some things that are being passed word to word, mouth to mouth. So we're going to share a, a, a few pieces of information to make sure that what's out there is clear and logical and also give the board a chance to get a better understanding of where our status is with this potential grant opportunity. 
the district did receive a COPS, a COPS grant. The district did engage with a professional grant writing company in order to achieve the grant. As soon as we were aware that we earned the grant through the, through the grant writing corporation, the business office with Mr. Carroll, the executive principal, myself, we began to do our due diligence. It's wonderful to say and hear that you're getting money, but it's better to make sure you fully understand what it is that you're getting, what you can get for those dollars, and what are the obligations that the district may be committed to um, through a grant writing company that is not typical when we go out and seek New York State grants. Um, uh, Casey Van Epps seeks grants all the time, but he works through BOCES and he works through New York State, and we know what we're working with. In this instance, it was essential that we do our due diligence. So we learned these four things. We learned after the fact that the COPS grant has a matching contribution. And as we did our due diligence, we have not budgeted for this because we just learned this after the fact. We also are working very closely with Mr. Holt and the SMART Schools grant. The SMART Schools money is something that's been in New York State for about the last, well, I want to say seven to eight years. The SMART Schools money is again used for technology and school safety and items related to school safety which could be doors and cameras and things of that nature. Um, the work that Mr. Holt has done is he's put together a very comprehensive smart schools grant. As we did our homework, close to 90% of what is in the smart schools act, which is money coming from New York state is also in the cops grant. Essential to this understanding is that the work that Mr. Holt is doing is 100% reimbursable. So after we spend the money, we get the money back. And Mr. Carroll has budgeted for this grant. And then finally, um, I, I asked Mr. Salatel to, to check in the community, to check with friends, to check with other educators throughout the area. And it was very difficult. I, I'm not saying that there's a problem, but I'm going to tell you that it was very difficult to validate the credentials of the grant consultants. So we put all of this together and essentially have put this on hold until we can make a better and final decision. So we are not moving forward at this juncture. Um, I think, Scott, we have what, 30 days, 90 days? 45 days. We have 45 days. So our, our initial work um, and the facts that I want to make sure that the community is aware of and the board is aware of aren't leading us down a, a, a pathway in which we're content but we need to finish this due diligence before we make a final decision within the next 45 days. Thoughts or questions for the board? When does the 45 days start? It started on 919. Okay. Thank you. Is there a fee that has already been paid or is due to the grant consultant? that comes out of that grant? Yes, so it's after the fact. So you're regardless, we would be um, <clears throat> on the hook for about roughly 12%. If we were to do the actual grant itself, it's 25%. So it's a matching grant, 75, 25. So that you'll just keep us informed of next steps and what takes place next? Absolutely. You now have the facts in front of you. Yep. Um, we haven't finished our due diligence. We're close. Okay. Uh, and then our next step is to make sure that you're aware if you do not you do not need to take action, but we want to make sure you're aware of any action we take and any consequences there. Okay. Thank you. Great. So Okay, I want to start off as well by recognizing the Board of Education. Certainly, 
You deserve all the accolades you get. I know at times it may, may feel like a thankless job, but on behalf of the school and community, know that we're very thankful for all that you do. So the hours, the time, the commitment, I know it's extensive, but from students to staff to community, we really appreciate all that you do for our school and community. So thank you once again. I wanna start off with staffing update. Uh, this is news pretty much all set at the elementary. We're still looking for two certified teachers at the middle school, high school. We'll continue to post for those positions. That's the ESSO position as well as the special <laughs> education position. I was just at a meeting Friday and there, my colleagues throughout the area are all struggling trying to find the same type uh, teacher certifications. And uh, there is some initiatives being done at the state level that hopefully we'll hear more down the line to address the teacher shortage situation that is happening all over the state and even the country. I want to announce a special visit that we will be having here at our school on November 11th. Senator Helming will be visiting with all the district superintendents throughout our GVAP OCs. And the purpose of the meeting is uh, to provide feedback to Senator Helming on school budgets, as well as what are some of the top priorities. Uh, so the timing is important. We all know the Rockefeller Institute report will be coming out in December. So any feedback we can give would be extremely valuable. And I know a lot of superintendents in the area have a tremendous amount of experience to give some valuable insight to Senator Helming during this visit. And we are doing it in our new STEAM lab. So it'll be a nice way to showcase that to um, other superintendents. I'm sure you've heard uh, at the end of June, the governor signed a chapter 143 of the law of 2024, which amends education law 3012D and establish education law 3012E. The law would transition to new teacher and principal evaluation systems beginning in the 24-25 school year. Schools may continue to implement their current plans throughout this year, and then they will be submitting some modifications right on to 2031-2032. After the 2031-32 school year, all plans must be designed, submitted, and implemented in accordance with the new New York State STEPS framework. So that'll be some work down the road that you'll hear more of, but right now schools are not forced. We have to do some modifications here and there over the next several years. Uh, so that'll be working with unions and it, it'll happen across the state. On Friday, and thank you, Mrs. Dalmage, Mrs. Curley. Wow, going back to when she was a student. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> Mrs. Curley, Mr. Veely, Mrs. New. On Friday, we had our first kindergarten senior wow. activity day. And I think Mrs. Curley did highlight the numbers of seniors that are participating in this and just what a great day, what a great opportunity for our students. So thank you and the staff for, for putting that together. I'm gonna feel, steal Mrs. Chandler's thunder a little bit. Um, I'm gonna be very brief, but I know down the line, she's gonna wanna show pictures and be real fancy with it. But Mr. Laughlin's product design and development and architecture drafting classes have done a magnificent job for our fine arts boosters and program. They're doing work on the stage. They're also doing a ton of work in the back area for storage and all that. So not only can we say cheap labor, <laughs> but of the highest quality. Free labor. Free labor. <laughs> yeah. Crossing into the yeah. legal area there. But, <laughs> no, they, it's, it's really, it fits nicely into giving them the hands-on experience yeah. that students need. So uh, thank you, Mr. Laughlin and the students for just doing an outstanding, outstanding job. Mike, can I just add real quickly that FAB has done an amazing favor for us and they've actually donated from their um, money, all of the supply budget oh, for, wow. um, for the backstage storage area so it was almost nine hundred dollars and wow. um we would have paid for it out of um drama club money but i think that them stepping up 
shows just another layer of how much they support the arts. So we really do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I will come at a later date with pictures and things like that. <laughs> I did on Friday go look at it. It's absolutely remarkable the job the students, Mr. Walkman, did. High quality. In closing, thanks once again for all you do and all your time. Really appreciate it. And then just some finally, uh, if you're going to do the, do we need to do a quick run through of upcoming events or they speak for themselves? They've been communicated, but let's do it one more time. October 25th, we'll be doing the elementary early dismissal. October 25th is the go home drill, early go home drill. Students will be released 15 minutes early, elementary course at 11 o'clock because it is a half day for them. And middle school, high school will be at 2.30. October 25th, also a big favorite event in the school community is a trunk or treat. And I know there's been a lot planned from the board, so that'll be an exciting time starting at 5.30. Are you going to give any clues or just? We'll have a trunk. There we'll will have be a trunk. treats. Be <laughs> <laughs> okay. It'll be All fun. The clues will you be, will the, will the administration are you going to meet it? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. I said, John. to do all that, so I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, as long as she brings the kids with her, then we all. <laughs> Any other questions? Great, very good. Great, thank, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody signed in? Allison. Allison, Allison okay. okay. Hello, everyone. So, um, I wanted to hold off on this when it was in the less official um, part of the program, and I didn't want to interrupt the vote on the um, volunteer firefighter EMS, but I do have a couple questions. Number one, can we get more assessments if we have more people in our household in that? Like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Take a lot of money out. And spouses. I mean, some of us get up two or three times a night. I know the alarm's off. So just saying, something to think about. Um, you have to call Ken Flake on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in all honesty, though, the voluntary nature of our um, of our services that we have in our region kind of um, mirror the same idea of how you all volunteer um, to help our community as well, in a bit of a different way, but as much of an impact, in my opinion. Um, so we want. I want to say, you know, Happy Board Appreciation Week, and um, you know, just talk for a moment about how I've seen this year go with this board and just talk about that. So, you know, some school years begin pretty smoothly without a whole lot of hullabaloo and stuff like that. This year for us, I would say is probably not that much. We had two in significant changes from last year to this year. One, we had some administrative shifting um, and that can be a little bit dis uh, disconcerting for people. And then we also had a, a vote on our capital project, which can also be a little bit stressful at times. And what I want to say is um, being a, a part of that whole idea, I feel like both of those um, situations went extremely well. And that is primarily because as a board, you steered the ship and allowed Geneseo to thrive during what could have been a really tough time. You made every effort to put measures in place so that all the situations had a positive outcome, and I believed you accomplished that goal. Our new administrative structure has been working well, and of course, we all know that the building project passed overwhelmingly. I want to thank you all for supporting the GFA members and for making the start to the year as smooth as possible, given the circumstances. I look forward to working with you this year as GFA president, and I want to thank you again for all of your hard work on behalf of the community, the students, the staff, and faculty at GCS. So thank you for all you do. It does not go unnoticed, and we really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, Ellen. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for all the, 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 the great statements. Um, very much appreciated. Any update on no, we, haven't, we haven't met since the last meeting. We'll, have a, we'll meet before our next meeting. Okay. Kevin, I see some uh, 
first reads in tonight's agenda and you guys met tonight? Yeah, we had a meeting tonight. Um, really discuss one policy that has been lingering for quite some time, and that's 7350, which is a timeout physical restraint policy. Uh, Brad Lehman was there at the um, meeting as well, and he has done a lot of research in regards to what attorneys suggest, uh, fire inversions, copy, uh, Erie Bosey's one um, in their policy brought together. Um, all of these things will give us a good set of guidance in regards to restructuring what's going to be an acceptable policy to fit, meet the needs of Genesis Central School. So, you know, it's, it's going to be our policy that meets what has to, you know, meet the, the, the legal requirements as well. Also too, so that we worked through that. Um, the policy is current, nine pages long. A lot of questions, good interactions, and um, we have a draft um, ready and at our next policy meeting, we'll have a, we'll go over that draft and hopefully it'll be all set for a read. Um, in section 806 of tonight's agenda, there's 11 policies that we did do uh, in a previous meeting that are out for the first read right now. Um, so they're there. Also, a link to each policy is available for anybody to, to examine those or ask questions. Thank you. Any questions on any of the policies? We'll get to that in the agenda. Okay. GCF, any update? The applications are coming in, right, Sherry? We did a few each week. So once okay. again, we appreciate all the work from the committee and the fund to support our programs and our students as well. We've already started, even though it's early in the year, the applications are coming in. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll turn to the personnel. I'd like to ask for a consent motion for item 7.02 or 7.12. Okay. Um, there's a, uh, anyway, we have a second. All right. Um, any questions on personnel items? I'm going to make just a quick statement to the board, and then uh, I don't know if Scott or, or uh, uh, Mike were also want to follow up. We're very excited about uh, appointing our new uh, uh, director uh, of super. I'm sorry, transportation supervisor. Uh, Ms. Ms. Bonnie Weidman. Uh, she comes to us from Dansville with a wealth of experience, not only in Dansville, but in Livonia as well. Um, she went through an interview process as well as a screening process, and the members of our interview committee representing um, individuals from the bus garage and from our uh, staff um, were very impressed with the way she responded to questions and the connections that we, we made. Um, we once again thank Jay Ballard for all of his service to the Geneseo Central School District, and we're very excited that uh, Ms. Weidman will be starting with us on October 29th. Great. Thank you. Yep, and I'd like to thank Trish that has been filling in over there in the meantime. Yes. Mr. Carroll, for all your work in it, the whole admin team. You know, we've, we've had to cover some driving situations <laughs> and the sub shortage again. Not unique to Geneseo, but certain, certainly very challenging. So thank you all for all your efforts to get our students here safely on time and home. On time and safely. So Great. thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the interview committee as well. Any other questions? That said, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any personnel items? So we'll thank you. And new business. I'd like to ask for a consent motion for items 8.02 to 8.07. Any questions on any of the new business items? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Under the business office. I'd like to ask for a consent vote on items 9.02 to 9.04. Second. Any questions on any of these? Thank you to those who provided donations. <laughs> All in favor? Right. Any opposed? So All right. With that, I think we are anything else before the board? 
from the board. I just like to thank the community for the support of the capital improvement project. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. Uh, this is actually the first meeting we've had since then. So it's, it's uh, well, thank you for bringing that up. Um, tremendous response. From overwhelmingly approval. I know the project team is already getting started on, on taking a close look at internal design and these spec changes. And then in the very near future, we'll submit that to SED. It could take up to eight months for that particular approval process. We hope to accelerate that. We'd love to, but you know, we'll have to wait and see what SED does. But thank you to the board, to the committees, to the administration, to the community in general for all of the, all of their support. Thanks. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to go home. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Grab some cake. Right. More cake.